Hi guys, I'm Luke. I'm George. And I'm Sean. And today we are going to be making a short film. Can you guess where we are? Camden. Um, we're going to be making a short film, but using three totally separate cameras. I'll be using the Canon R5. I'm on the Sony a7S III. And I'm on the Lumix S5 II. Now, I think any filmmaker will tell you that these three cameras are probably at the top of the line for, you know, commercial filmmaking, run and gun shooters. They're, they're just impeccable. But how do they differ? Well, we'll tell you by going out, making a little short. We'll all sort of choose our own thing to shoot in Camden. And we're going to let you know what each one offers. How do they differ? What are their price points? And we'll see what we get. So I've got a really basic setup here. I would usually opt for using some more fancy equipment, stuff like a gimbal to get really nice stabilized footage, but we're in Camden Market. You're gonna attract a lot of attention if you use a gimbal. We also haven't actually asked these businesses yet. I'm gonna go approach them and ask them. So if I do that with all this equipment, it can be quite intimidating. I actually think for something like a 30 second piece, you're you know, you're going to need lots of shots that are a bit shorter, so you perhaps don't always need that perfectly stabilized footage. I can just sort of go handheld and get some nice stuff. So I'm actually just going to shoot on one lens, my 2470. It's my do it all lens. It goes all the way down to f2.8, so it still gets a nice depth of field. It can still work in some of these lower light environments, but it keeps me really mobile, really cool that I can just use this one camera, one lens, and that's all I'm going to use to make this short film. Uh, now, I'm just sort of wandering around the market. I'm going to try and find a really good location. I'm just looking for a cool business or shop that intrigues me, that has some kind of charm, something that I think I can will be fun for me to shoot. So let's go find out. So there's a really cool business behind me called Camden Old Time Photos with this uh, dude who's uh, dressed up as an old sort of gangster. And I think that would be really fun. So I'm just going to go up to the business now and just ask them, explain what we're doing, explain that it will be fun and it's going to be free and we can give them the video afterwards. Hopefully they'll let me film them. Let's go see. One of the really nice things about using the a7S III is the fact that it shoots 4K 50 frames a second. That means that because I'm shooting handheld, we can slow that footage down by 50%. Really nice just for smoothing out that camera motion because I am shooting handheld and the A7S III has great stabilization but still having that 50 frames really helps. Also the fact that it's really amazing in low light so I can still bring up that shutter speed to shoot in 50 frames a second and crank the ISO without any worries at all because it's a tiny bit dark at certain points of this room but that's not going to be a worry for me at all which I love. <laughs> you do look great to be honest. <laughs> so one of the best things about shooting is using a model. Now, luckily, Sean has offered to be my model for today, but you don't actually always need like a bespoke model. You could have just used like a member of the public. That actually is really nice because you can get that bit of authenticity too. I've also put the camera into S and Q mode, which means I can actually shoot at 4K 100 frames a second, so that's four times slow-mo. And I'm going to get Sean to do some sort of funny stuff with the gun. And then when we play that back in that extreme slow-mo, that should look really cool. And fire. So I'm also utilizing the autofocus that the A7S III has, which is amazing, where I can just touch focus rack. So I'm going from Sean the model and then touch focus racking to the photographer just sort of adds a little bit of motion into the shot gives you you know changes the eyes point of interest which is really nice so that was really quick but that's just how to I shot a really quick 30 second primer video with the a7s3 most notably the things that I loved about using this camera for that is the fact that it has really exceptional autofocus. So even though we're shooting this really quickly, I can rely on the AF just to hit the subjects that I want to hit. I don't have to manual focus everything. Manual focusing everything takes a lot longer. So that was my favorite thing. I think also just having access to loads of different codecs, having access to the fact that I can crank the, uh, like especially when I was shooting in the 4K 100, I'm bringing my shutter speed quite high, which actually meant that I pushed the ISO all the way up to 12,800, which is the second base native ISO. So that's where you're going to not see much noise all the way up at 12,800, which is such a high ISO. There's a few things that I noticed about using the A7S III. That's why I love this camera. Uh, 
I do have to say though, it is also an expensive camera and you have to acknowledge that. So there are much cheaper ones out there. The A7S III is a bit pricey and so are a lot of the lenses that come with it. So that's a factor, but you are still getting really good value for your money just because it's such an exceptional camera. But that's it from my little section. I think that went really well, but I wanna see what Sean and Luke come up with. So we're gonna move over to Sean shooting on the Lumix S5 Mark II. So I've got myself a 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens on here. I've got a nice variable ND as well, so I can really make use of that F number to get a shallow depth of field where I need to. And we're in Camden at the moment, which is known for its eccentricity, but I think I'll go for something more on the calmer side, just to vary things up a little. Calm Camden, that's the hashtag. We're on vlog at the moment, but I tend to not really shoot log just because it's not really my style. So. Flat is meant to be pretty good, because you still get plenty of colours on the go, um, but also a nice flatness so you can do a little bit of a grade as well. This could be quite nice. Camden Crystals. Let's have a look. Hello. I was wondering if I'd just do a little promo video for this shop here. Great on business. So I'm stopping down to 2.8, latching on my focus onto the sign up there as an establisher for where we are. I'm just gonna do some parallaxy kind of stuff with some people's heads walking by. I'm not even doing 50, just because of the flicker from all the lights. So, you know, bearing that in mind, I thought I'd go to 25p and uh, then shoot at um, a, like a 60th, you know, frame rate sort of thing to kind of try and cut that flicker down. And then my follow-up shot is just gonna be like, kind of like an under twisty kind of shot of these because they're quite, Quite interesting, nice little bit of spectacle there. And because of the autofocus, I hardly have to put any effort in at all. Image stabilization, no gimbal, just with my hands, twisting my body like this. It's unbelievable, actually. Way better than an A7S III. And I think because it's quite vibrant, we're going for like a calm Camden kind of thing. I might cut the audio entirely from this and just kind of put some kind of ASMR meditation music in the back. Notes for the editor anyway. Slider shot stuff again at a nice, easy pace. Whenever I'm doing shots like this, I always, in my head, count to either four or five, because I always feel that shots like this, you want about three seconds to let it breathe. Um, usually, if you're shooting at 50 frames per second, still count to three, but then you get six seconds. And sometimes that breath really gives the audience a chance to absorb what they're looking at, especially when it's something so serene as what we're looking at now. So I think that went really well. Um, the standout feature for me with the Lumix S5 II was the IBIS, you know, the in-body image stabilization. It was fantastic. It was like I had a gimbal, but I didn't. It literally came as this. Now let's see how Luke is getting along. Okay, it's my turn. I've got the R5 from Canon and I'm working with a 2470. Uh, so again, pretty versatile, lots to play with. I think I'm going to go for a food vibe because Camden Market's famous for its food. There's so many options. And I think I'm going to do like a kind of snazzy, transition-y, uh, you know, I'm going to chuck it on the gimbal maybe and like, you know, lots of like zoom cuts and panning shots and all that kind of stuff. But we'll see, we'll see how it turns out. The nice thing about these cameras is that they are DSLRs, they're small, they're lightweight, which means that you can chuck them on a gimbal, um, which I wouldn't typically do in such a crowded, crazy area, but I'm really keen on getting something that, that looks looks quite cool. The 2470 is just about lightweight enough from Canon that you can do that. So I'll see how that goes. I would love to make a promo video for you, for your business. Would you like that? Perfect. One of the great things I love about the R5 is the fact that I can touch the screen and it will focus on wherever I touch on the screen. Um, perfect for right now. I can't be messing with the, uh, you know, the manual. And there's also lots of different things to focus on because he's holding food, but then I might want to switch to his face. I might want to focus on a different area of the, of the shop. I'm going to zoom in. So it's just a really handy tool. The nice thing about shooting food as well is like it's colorful. It's really colorful and there's lots of steam. So it's quite rich on the eye. What I am really loving is like going all the way to 70 mil 
and then you can really see the image quality of the uh, of the R5 and this is why people choose the R5 to do their videography because not only is it an amazing stills camera which I think maybe the other two in this lineup in this little competition probably don't stack up as well against I think the R5 is the king of stills out of those three um, but the video it is it really is stunning like image quality wise so yeah I'm gonna get really really shallow because they've prepared such wonderful looking food here the autofocus is not that good <laughs> So uh, I will have to manual it up for something this close. Like I'm on 70 mil and I'm like, literally, I can see the salt on the chips. I'm that close, you know. But amazingly, like going that close, I'm able to almost get like macro shots here. Like look how close I am right now, which is really good for food and detail. If you're going to shoot something with a lot of color, then you want to get you want to get the best out of that. So I'm shooting in log, C log. They offer a few versions of C log normal c log 2 i don't know if there's a c log 3 but i've opted for c log just because i find it easier to grade so in terms of the grade and when i get into the edit like i can play around with all that lovely color depth and i can really make these colors pop you know so the nice thing about being a filmmaker is when you do when you when you film people's businesses they give you free stuff so <laughs> and after filming there for a while i was getting quite hungry um that went really well i think uh what i was really struck by was uh I was using the gamma assist to be able to kind of see what the colors were like and that was coming through really well on the R5 so I think that for me is what's really strong about the R5 is like colors and just just that crisp crisp image quality um so yeah let's let's debrief let's talk to the boys see how they got on and uh who we think is the king of videography have it three sort of mini short reels if you like for, for a kind of social media purpose for each business um, who do you think was the best mine <laughs> <laughs> I think they're all very different I mean I was rushing mine at the end but it was all right yours was you, well, you kind of lucked out with what you managed yeah to I thought the business was really cool and like yeah. yeah I thought the business was really cool and it worked out and I thought again I mean I use this Sony every day I absolutely love it I thought it performed really well uh, I've ever since I first picked it up I fell in love with this camera and I thought it was really fun I got to see Sean dress up as a gangster so you know, even if my short film was the worst, I really don't care at this point. <laughs> Memories were made. <laughs> uh, Sean, how did yours How did yours go? Um, I haven't used a Lumix camera for a couple of years now. And I was super impressed with how I could just pick this up, 
and immediately just had like user-friendly experience extravaganza with the the quality of the picture I was seeing on on the screen. The the autofocus was very responsive and very nice to work with, and the image stabilization was sensational. For me, the the R5 is just a beautiful thing. I mean, it's it is on the pricey side, but it is it's it's just gorgeous and. Uh, it sort of deserves that title it has of being like a, an amazing hybrid camera that, that is perfect for, you know, wedding video videographers, event videographers, whatever, whatever, you, whatever you fancy. Now, when it comes to sort of speed of use, how quickly you can adapt in the environment, a lot of the time we didn't want to inconvenience the businesses, so we didn't want to spend long disrupting them. So being able to work quickly is a must. For me, my favorite thing about that in the A7S III is having that S and Q switch, which I can just immediately flip it in to another kind of recording mode where I can then get my super slow-mo, it's gonna output it slow-mo. Amazing that I can just do that with a flick of a switch. I don't even need to go into the menu, so I thought that was really cool. But I'm sure, to be honest, I think all of these cameras tick off speed of use in so many different ways that I really just think it's, it's more about user preference, it's not at all about the capabilities of the camera in that sense. Yeah, Sony gets uh, a little bit of flack when it comes to menus. People say it's a little bit too elaborate, the menus are too long or whatever. Uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm a Sony shooter most of the time and I don't find that. I think you just get used to these things, like everything's going to be different. Like I don't shoot on the Canon a lot, but um, today I had to pick it up. I hadn't used it in a while and I was able to just like get to what, what I needed pretty quickly. In terms of weight and size, I mean, the Canon is probably on the chunkier mm. size. I mean, I've got a yeah, long but they're like, but as you here. can see, uh, we'll give you a close up here, that they, they, they are kind of very similar. I'd say the Sony and the Lumix are virtually bang on in terms mm -hmm. of um, in terms of the uh, build quality and, and size. And then in terms of sort of the quality of each of these cameras, I mean, I've used all of these cameras, as have, have all of us actually used all of these cameras. The quality on all of them is exceptional. You know, you're going to get really nice, crisp image. You're going to get lots of different sort of recording formats, which is really useful for filmmaking. Probably I would give the quality to the R5 maybe because it shoots in 8k and i think that's really cool and there's that gives you the ability to crop that gives you the ability to perhaps get a bit of reach that your lens can't get or even if you were just going to downscale that 8k to a lower resolution you are going to get more detail there so if if we're going to quality again i think all of these are ample for whatever needs you're really going to have but I, for me i think the r5 probably gets the notch i think it's really apt that we're making this review today at a time when we've just had a big feature film come out called The Creator, 18 uh, mil budget, it has the same sensor as that camera. And we find these cameras to be pretty much on the same level, right? And it, you know, that camera is um, about, well, the FX3 is actually what they shot The Creator on, but same sensor. Um, and that camera is about four grand. And so you've got 80 million pound films being made on cameras like this. So. It feels like the world is going in a different direction in terms of filmmaking. Filmmaking is being more democratized and like the fact that you can pick up a camera and go and shoot something that looks as good as that film um, says it all. So in terms of flexibility for the Lumix S5, I'd say it has pretty much everything your average filmmaker or videographer would need. If you want slow motion, you've got that. If you want um, log profiles for grading, you've got that. If you don't want log profiles because you want to have some colors baked in because you don't do grading, you also have those options and a fairly wide range of those options as well. Um, and you also have so many lenses that you can choose from which are native to this camera, both you know third party and Panasonic's own as well. So you've got plenty of options there. You can also get adapters so you can use like other mounted lenses to go on this too. And uh, now that you've got the, the autofocus, it just opens up the world and makes things a lot more user friendly straight out of the box. So finally, just to go through the price points of each of these cameras, we have the Canon R5 coming in at about four grand. We have the a7S III, which comes in at 3,550 pounds. So a little bit cheaper than the Canon, but still an expensive body. And then finally, I think yours is 1750, yeah. which that's I mean, that's, that is crazy. <laughs> like, and, and we genuinely all feel like that, that you don't lose much in terms of, I mean, what I would say probably that lacks that these don't is maybe the, the autofocus is it's probably not, a, as good. not as it's not there yet. I wouldn't say it's still big improvement from the previous Lumix cameras, but, but it's now a contender. 
Yes. Now it's a contender, yes, it absolutely but is. you literally could buy two of those for less than either one of these cameras. That is and mental. that is huge. And yeah. the lenses are a lot cheaper on that than the Canon lenses, which, while they are lovely, are very pricey. So the range of Lumix's own S-Primes are all the same size and relatively the same weight across the different focal ranges that you can purchase. Um, for that flexibility when using on a gimbal, so you don't need to rebalance all the time. So there you have it. Those are the prices. I think, you know, it, they, these guys are a little bit pricey, I must admit, but because they are hybrids, because they are so, so high in quality, because they will last you a very long time, it's an investment worth making. But that one, for me, is just, for the, for the price, an astonishing camera so there you have it thank you so much for joining us today we really enjoyed shooting with these wonderful cameras we love them very much i've been luke i've been george and i've been sean and we'll see you on the next one